Welcome back to Switch to Linux. I'm going to do something a little bit different today than what I usually do. I'm actually going to do a top five video today. Uh, and I'm going to do a top five reasons why I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. There's a lot of discussion, of course, which distro do you use? Why do you use that distro and things like that? And uh, I get a chance to experiment with a lot of distros. I don't delve into a lot of them super deep, but I do actually focus a whole lot on, on just making sure I understand the basics of many of the distros. And I have chosen for most of my computers to run some version of Linux Mint, not entirely, but my main computer I'm recording this video on is Linux Mint Cinnamon and my main web development Linux computer is also Linux Mint Cinnamon. And there's some very, uh, specific reasons why I chose Linux Mint Cinnamon as opposed to any of the other distros. I also run uh, KDE back here. This is Linux Mint KDE. And I have an Ubuntu Mate on this hard drive. And in here I have some OpenSUSE. So there's a lot of a lot of experience I've done with a lot of different distros. But what I'm going to talk about here today is why it is that I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. Um, even though the very first experience I've had with, uh, uh, with uh, Linux was actually Ubuntu. And while I like Ubuntu and I like Ubuntu Unity, there's some very good reasons I did not go with Ubuntu Unity as, uh, as a primary reason. And it looks like I start talking, Kitty wants to come and say hi. So, hello everybody's. Hi everybody, use Linux Mint, it rocks. All right. So CJ the cat wanted to come up here and share his support for Linux Mint as well. Um, just a couple brief uh, introductions there. Uh, you can find uh, the channel on Patreon should you want to uh, support the channel over there. And I actually did a behind the scenes video today, behind the scenes on um, an outdoor philosophy video. So I talked about uh, all that kind of stuff so you can see those over there. Um, I also have an Amazon affiliates account. So if you do shop at Amazon, you like to support the channel a little bit, that's a good way that you can do that. You can find links for all that below. And without any further ado, we are going to dive into our top 10 reasons. So what we're going to do here is reason number one has to do with the user interface. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the user interface and talk about why I like to use it, if I can find my screen setup. There we are. All right. So here, um, I've loaded up Ubuntu Unity, which is the first Linux distro that I used. And the reason I do not like Unity for a regular work machine, although there's parts I do like it for, is that if I load up, if I want to load up Firefox and then even load up another window of Firefox, I can't really do that at all without do, going through and doing something to the effect like I, there's a hotkey for it, I'm sure. But what I actually have to do right here is I need to get the, um, I still can't get the stupid menu tab up there. Probably because we're just on a, um, uh, okay, this is weird. What I'm trying to get shown up there is the um, the menu the the menu bar, which I need the menu bar. What I need to do is I would like to open up a new a new um, instance of Firefox. I realize there's tabs, but what I do on my work, I frequently need to be running uh, running a lot of uh, um, uh, I need to be running a lot of uh, different tabs, different windows. I need to be able to, to go between several different things without having having to switch between tabs. So for example, if I'm building a WordPress site, I need to keep the HTML template in one browser instance and, and everything related to the HTML in that browser instance. I need to keep everything involved in the WordPress in that separate instance. And with any of these types of systems that do not have a taskbar along the bottom, I'm now locked out of this. Now this is concerning me that I can't seem to add the toolbar up there. The basic, I know it's not the bookmarks toolbar, it's the regular toolbar. If Firefox does away with that thing, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> All right, 
So the problem is I can't come over here and easily do that. In fact, on this one, I can't even seem to do that. But what I need to be able to do is add a new instance and I can't do that. And suppose I did get a separate instance. So here I can open a new window. Now I have two of them. Well, if I happen to minimize these, now I have to get back to this. I have to click on this twice and then select and figure out which one I need to load. And so I kind of get this dancing back between them, which would actually drive me crazy. And that's why I do not like using Ubuntu Unity or other Linux distros that do not have a taskbar at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down um, this virtual box right now. Just get that out of my way. So on Linux Mint now, um, on Cinnamon, what I have down here is a taskbar that the interface is set up just like a Windows interface, and everything about this is exactly what I want. Everything from being able to quickly minimize all windows by going down to the uh, down to the corner down here and um, and doing that, to having multiple instances of a particular program. So if I need two Firefoxes, I have two Firefoxes. Now what I was trying to do is if you right click this, you should be able to turn on the menu bar just like that. That's what I needed to turn on is turning on the menu bar. Um, but now I have two different instances of Firefox and I can quickly go back and forth between them all like this. And so here I can quickly navigate back and forth so the, the uh, uh, taskbar allows me to do that. So any Linux distro that I use, uh, I like the taskbar. But the other things that I like about it are out of the box, it behaves a whole lot like the Windows system, which I like the Windows ecosystem as far as its productivity. I just can't stand its spying aspect and where they're going with turning the thing into a walled garden. Okay, but what I do like about it is just the ability to click my Windows meta key without having to program it in, in uh, any complexity. I can have access to all my different applications and even the start menu itself behaves a whole lot like the Windows start menu where I can select my different categories. Of course, that's a little bit different, but I like the way that Linux organizes things. And then I can, of course, pin my most used applications over here. So I'm going to do any final edits of the video with Caden Live. I have that pinned over here. I use OBS for recording, so that's over here. And so this gives me the ability to do anything that I need it to do from the user interface perspective. Not to mention I can do the right click, I can add new documents. Of course, in Linux, I need to add them to my templates folder, but there's a lot of slick design to it. Um, the next thing I like about it, so the second factor. The first, of course, was the interface. The second thing I like about Linux Mint Cinnamon is it, for me, it is very fast and it's not buggy at all on any system I've ever tried it on. Now, a disclaimer, there are certainly some systems that it will not work as well as it will on others. And so we need to keep that in mind that not all Linux distros work perfectly well on, on every system. But with this computer here, um, I have an AMD graphics card. If I had an NVIDIA graphics card, it'd probably work just about the same. There's proprietary drivers that I can use. I can choose to use them, choose not to use them. So out of the box, it's fast for me and it's not buggy at all. And uh, when I installed it, it ran better than Windows 10 did on the equivalent computer, i.e. the computer that I run uh, I, I run my uh, Linux on my for my uh, web development computer, started as a Windows 10 computer, I booted into Windows 10, verified everything worked on the thing, and then I wiped the hard drive, installed Linux Mint Cinnamon, and then the thing worked great out of the box. Not everybody has the fast and non-buggy experience, but certainly when you compare other Linux distros with uh, Linux Mint, a uh, percentage of people who do not have trouble with Linux Mint is much greater than the percentage of other ones. For example, a lot of people say that how good elementary is. The problem I've encountered is from my experience, elementary just has not worked on any hardware that I've actually installed it on. Other people say it works great and it seems to be based exclusively on the comments on my videos and comments on other people's videos and other people's uh, review videos, it's about 50-50 for elementary OS. 50% of the people have a great user experience, 50% of people don't. With Linux Mint Cinnamon, it seems as though a whole lot more people have a better experience than don't have a better experience. And so for me, that was a, a big take on my case why I like Linux Mint Cinnamon. 
All right. The third reason is that it feels complete out of the box. So I install Linux Mint Cinnamon and it feels like it's ready to go, but it also feels like it's, they've made a lot of good choices in the software. Now, I don't like in 18.1, they abandoned a, a Banshee for Rhythmbox because I don't really like Rhythmbox and I really like Banshee, but I understand the reason why they did that. It seems like Banshee's development has slowed down if it's still going at all. Nevertheless, I still have the option to install it on Linux Mint Cinnamon easily. Um, and, um, I can do that on any computer. So on this computer, I haven't bothered because I don't use this computer to listen to any music on, but on my, um, on my web design computer, I did indeed do that because that is my mobile computer. So I will listen to things on that. And so having a good media player is, is uh, key for that computer to run well. All right. But as far as other things regarding it, uh, feeling like a complete system, is out of the box, it has a whole lot of good uh, good themes to it. Now, I installed this theme separate. Uh, this is uh, pretty much exactly the type of theme I was looking for. I installed it separate. Of course, I made the, the desktop backgrounds that we'll scroll through. Um, but the theme I just simply downloaded from the uh, online repositories. But if you were wanting to, uh, if you were wanting to, uh, just pick a theme out of the box, you could go with a whole lot of different themes. So you'll see this one's called Glass Mint. I grabbed it by looking through these. There's a lot of different themes that you can get, everything from newer flat UI styles that are becoming popular to older versions that are not quite so flat. You have some light themes, you have some dark themes. So there's a lot that you can do out of the box. Now, I installed a few themes that, that were not in the box, but most of these are, which does include older style, more skeuomorphic themes, and it does include the newer style flat UI themes. So you can do any of those with it without messing with it, but they do not sacrifice some, some new distros are coming out and they're just so bloated with so many themes that it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, uh, to do that. So you have that factor to go for it as well. Um, you also have pre-installed out of the box, a lot of good system utilities, not an excessive over redundant amount of things, but we can manage archives. We can, we have a calculator, we have a character map, which is actually more important than some people think. You have disk utilities, document viewers, font viewers, um, help documents, some basic image viewers, password manager. So there is a whole lot of things that you can do, including the USB image writers and the stick formatters that I use on a regular basis. You also have domain blockers, firewalls, uh, printer uh, abilities, software management, system monitor, a whole lot of things that really make this thing feel like a complete operating system. It doesn't feel like it's missing things. And that's one of the things that I experience on some other distros is they keep it so light to the software. And I understand that philosophy too. The philosophy is that we don't want it to be so light in software that, um, that we don't experience like you know, some people want a super light system so I can merely install the stuff I want. I get that philosophy. But for me, I like an operating system, a, a particular utilitarian operating system to feel like a utilitarian operating system. I'm not using my computers to get on email and browse the internet. This That's not the function of my computers. My computers are tools. And I feel like, like with Linux Mint Cinnamon, I have all of the necessary tools to uh, make the system work well. So um, the next thing I like about it is the available software. The software available in Linux Mint is, is very good. It is up to date. Um, I've only had to install PPAs for a few things. I think I had to install them for Simple Screen Recorder and for OBS. Um, Although OBS is starting to make its way into some repositories as is Simple Screen Recorder, so I'm expecting that pretty soon those are going to be pretty standard um, in re software repositories. So you can install a whole lot of other software with the system. And so let me actually transition over so you can see the, the desktop there. All right, so um, here inside the software manager, 
you can see the number of software is, is quite extensive. In fact, going back, let's see. So there's 80, what is this? 800, uh, 84,000. Couldn't see them back here. 84,000 software packages available spread over all sorts of variety of, uh, of different, uh, uh, different, um, categories. And so there is a, an ample amount of software available. Of course, once I've added the PPA, then I could uh, go in and uh, and install your um, uh, your other software. Although usually I just do those through the terminal. But you can see science and education programming, font packages, office games, accessories. This feels like a full feature system. And from my experience, I could be wrong, but from my experience, there doesn't seem to be a lot of abandonware. And that's what seems to have happened in some of these repositories. And that's why I like some, some distro's decision to uh, remove a lot of the old bloatware software, but then sometimes it feels a little bit too empty. So I'm able to access, though, all of the things that I need to access without a huge, uh, a huge problem. And so the available software for me is a critical, important thing. So my fifth reason for wanting to use Linux Mint Cinnamon is for me and for a lot of people, it just works. Out of the box, the thing just works. You have the driver utilities. Uh, in fact, if I can find those, let me uh, track those guys down. Okay, so... Um, goofed up my password there. My uh, driver utility showed up on my other window. Move that over there. All right, so here is a driver manager. It's what it's doing now is it's uploading the cache. So here actually I can include this. It might actually help the system performance a little bit better if I do that. But I have the option to use proprietary drivers or not use proprietary drivers. I will not choose to do that while I'm recording a video, but I might test it uh, as I come offline here. So you have the ability, um, you also have the ability, like codecs are installed. Um, well, you have the option to install codecs at install. You have the ability to manage those. So media files will work out of the box. DVDs will work out of the box. You can plug something right into the drive here and it'll work. I have not encountered anything in Linux Mint Cinnamon that just doesn't work for me. And so those are my top reasons for using Linux Mint Cinnamon. Namely, I like the, the interface, it jives with my workflow, it's very produ uh, productive in the way that I tend to work. I like the look, I like the feel of it. For me and a lot of other people that have used Linux Mint Cinnamon over the years, it's very fast, it's, it's not very buggy on, on most hardware configurations. A lot of people say it just works for them, and that's the thing for me, it just works. Um, the OS feels complete out of the box. It doesn't feel like I'm missing anything, whether I need a system utility or check a disk manager or something. Out of the box, it just seems to work. Um, I can put modern themes on it. I can put older themes on it. I can style my own theme if I'm good enough with that type of stuff. I like the available software, what's available, um, how it can be used. I like what's pre-installed, and I like the availability for the other software that is out there. And finally, for me, it just works. And I hope that uh, you have the experience where it just works for you as well. But those are my top five reasons for using Linux Mint Cinnamon on most of my production type computers. So thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video and you'd like to help support the channel, you can check us out on Patreon. Uh, Tom M is my name over there on Patreon. There's also an Amazon link below. So if you are looking to purchase something from Amazon and you wanna help out the channel in that respect, you can go ahead and use that link on Amazon. Uh, so all those links are, are down below in the description. So thanks for watching everybody and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.